Hello, I'm Rachel Jones with Kalkine Media. Welcome to another edition of Executive Corner Expert Talks. In this edition, I'll be shining a light on Aramentum Resources. Now, Aramentum holds a diversified portfolio of gold and base metals such as copper, nickel and cobalt in the Republic of Cyprus. The company holds four granted prospecting permits and two reconnaissance permits and have also applied for one additional exploration permit. Aramentum is well poised to make the best of the growing interest in the battery metal market. And that's thanks to the surging electric vehicle and renewable energy demand. Today, I'm with Managing Director Jeff Muirs to hear more about the company. Jeff, thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Now, first off, Jeff, I'm sure our viewers will be interested in Cyprus. It's such a long way from Australia. Can you tell us what attracted you to the island? Yes, so look, it is interesting. A lot of Australians, they they know the Mediterranean. They don't necessarily know where Cyprus is. Um, it's in the eastern Mediterranean, not far from Greece, about an hour's flight. It's geographically situated between Lebanon and Turkey and um, about 14 and a half thousand kilometers away from Australia. Um, so your question, what attracted us to Cyprus? The chairman and I, Rob, were looking all around Europe. This is going back to 2017 when cobalt was our focus, looking at cobalt projects. And we spent a lot of time looking in different parts of Europe. And um, I think with any mining project or exploration project, the environment you're operating in has to be the number one consideration. Now, when I say environment, I don't necessarily mean the, the plants and, and the rocks and the, uh, the natural environment, but also the polit political environment. And um, Cyprus was a country that's been politically stable now for 50 or 60 years. It's a small population. It had a very big mining history, historically, particularly in copper. And um, a lot of the other countries we looked at in Europe they um, had some issues. So for example, Czechoslovakia, the government there decided that cobalt was a, a, a mineral of national interest. So you needed to be a, a local company to apply for exploration licenses. Some places like Germany, Finland, you have old cobalt mines in built up areas or right on the boundary or right on the um, major river course or something like that. So I think um, there's a lot of factors that, that that drew us to Cyprus and, I, and it ticked a lot of boxes for us. Absolutely, it sounds like a great place to be. Now with that, can you outline to us what asset your company has and how you plan to develop a mine? Yeah, so we, um, we acquired this project in uh, 2021. We uh, have around 40 kilometres of strike length on the contact between the ultramafic rocks and the intrusive rocks. and. Along that contact, uh, you've got a major transform fault zone, you've got an intraplate boundary between the uh, two major um, tectonic plates. And so it was a great structural location there. There's a lot of uh, old workings and old mining in the tenements from back in the 1950s and 60s. And a lot of that four kilometers, sorry, 40 kilometers of strike, there is um, gossens um, and other indications of minerals at surface. So. I want to say that we are an exploration company. So when we talk about assets, we're talking about exploration ground. We own the ground 100% subject to a, a small payment of £200,000 in shares at the IPO price. And um, we, we don't have a resource at this point, although it's something that we're, we're looking to drill towards a resource once we get listed. Well, that's one thing we're very interested to hear about. Can you tell us about the IPO? How is the capital raising going? Sure. So um, just to sort of touch on that and go back, I guess, on, on the asset side. I mean, we, we're we talking about um, a polymetallic project with nickel, copper, gold and cobalt. And some of the past work that was done had grades up to 11% nickel, 3% cobalt, 18% copper and uh, 10 grams a tonne gold in, in surface sampling, added sampling, and, and some of the drilling. We had quite a lot of interest in, in the, um, the capital raising we did last year. We raised over one and a half million dollars. We had um, more than five geologists on the ground late last year doing a lot of work. And uh, we launched the IPO in May. We very quickly 
got well above, I guess, the halfway mark of what we're looking for, five to $7 million. And then just as we'd started the marketing going into June, the uh, the markets corrected um, and therefore it slowed things down a little bit. So our listing date has been delayed somewhat. However, we're still talking to a lot of people, a lot of cornerstones and potential institutional investors and people like that. So it's just taking a little bit longer in this volatile market. However, um, we're still confident that um, the interest levels will see the, uh, the funds come into the company in the next uh, in the coming weeks fantastic and best of luck from us for that now you have a very strong board what can you tell me about them and the skills they have so myself i guess you could call me an economic geologist i have spent the past sort of 20 years or so um, involved in mineral economics from coal economics i worked in stockbroking um, and funds management for about seven years so i've got a, a financial background um, and a background in consulting. Our chairman, Rob Thompson, has been involved with a, with a lot of companies around the world. He's a mining engineer. He's built mines right across Asia and different parts of um, the world, including um, some of your um, subscribers might know about um, Oceana Gold. So Rob was running, running Climax Mining. That was then taken over by Oceana Gold. He built the Sepon mine for Oceana. He, um, has also been involved in, in, in nickel mines and uh, he, he was more recently involved in a company that built the Wetar copper mine in Indonesia and he has been responsible for putting a, a recent IPO together called Southern Palladium that listed at 50 cents back in uh, late May it's now trading about 90 cents and they've got a 40 million ounce platinum project in South Africa so um, Rob and I met more than 10 years ago working on a gold project in Indonesia and we've worked in Africa together and um, Ben Jarvis is also on the board. Ben runs a uh, PR firm, he's also a successful resource investor. So between Rob and Ben, they've got a lot of board experience. Um, they're on the board of five or six listed companies, I think, between them. So we do have that depth, not only of operational expertise on the mining front, um, we've also got uh, a lot of board experience um, in listed, listed mining companies. Fantastic. So what do you believe sets the company apart from the hundreds of similar exploration companies? So a, a lot of people, a lot of companies come to IPO, they're looking to raise money to either acquire a project or they're looking to raise money to explore some ground where they, they've got some indications of mineralization. So there might be some rock chips with some gold in it or, or lithium or, or nickel or something like that. They don't necessarily have a lot of past drilling. Um, this particular project is a little bit different because we own the ground 100% subject to that, uh, that final payment. Like I said, we've been acquiring ground. We've got seven or eight tenements we own. Um, but also we, it's, it's considered brownfields because there was a, up to about one and a half kilometres of addicts put in in the 1950s plus uh, something in the order of 15 to 25 drill holes historically across the ground as recently as 2013-14. So there's a there's a large body of information there. There's all bodies that outcrop its surface. Um, there's been a lot of work done on, on what we're looking for. So what sets us apart, I think, is not only the fact we have, we have four potential metals, which may later form part of the revenue stream. I think um, we are drilling for a resource and, and we know where to drill, particularly at our Laxia project. We've done the 3D modeling, the ore body hangs together. Um, most of the drilling that's been done is only quite shallow, 100 meters or so on average. So we're hoping to, to systematically drill deeper, initially 150 meters, but later on next year, probably down to 300 meters. And so um, I think if you're looking at a single commodity company, say a copper company, for instance, um, they might have a copper project and copper is $4 a pound, um, which it has been recently. A lot of these projects look quite good, um, but you need to remember a couple of years ago, copper was only $2 a pound or a little bit more than that. So you're very vulnerable that if copper, for example, fell back, um, then your, the value of your investment could also fall. When you have four potential revenue streams like cobalt, which is trading at over 70,000 US a tonne, um, gold, copper, and potentially nickel, um, whether one individual commodity falls, you're not so concerned. So, so gold could drop or copper could drop and it's really not going to have a huge impact on the potential economics uh, should we get to that, that mine planning stage over the next couple of years. 
Absolutely, fantastic plan. Now, where do you see your company in the next two to three years? Um, one of the good things about Cyprus, aside from the excellent infrastructure there uh, and the political stability, they, uh, we, I mean, we could drive to our drilling sites with, with two wheel vehicles and hatchbacks, that sort of thing, to very close to where we want to drill, which is quite unique globally. Um, in a couple of years' time, I think uh, Cyprus has a, a use it or lose it um, approach to exploration. So you have these two five year terms on your prospecting license. And the reason we were able to acquire these. Um, this ground that, that, that people have said, well, how did you manage to acquire it so cheaply? And that sort of thing is the past owners were getting towards the end of that 10 year period where you're not allowed to keep ground as a director uh, for longer than that. Um, so that gave an opportunity to us. We're quite focused on our first project at Laxia. We'd like to bring that um, to a resource stage um, after say 12 months of drilling. So our first 12 months is, is really pushing the Laxia project to a resource. Um, later on, after a couple of years, we would like to bring in a couple of other prospects and, and next year, all going well, we, we'd like to have a second or third drill rig come in and, and help us push towards infield drilling, move from, I guess, the sort of scoping level stage to a PFS um, on the project over the next two or three years and, and longer term, look at um, conceptually a, a multi-mine approach where you might have one mine over here delivering ore to a central treatment plant and you might have a second or third source of ore you bring in, but that's all very conceptual. But I guess um, when you're looking at investing in a company, you wanna make sure that the, that the management team has a, has a medium term vision, what do they wanna achieve? And for us, we're very focused here on um, delivering some, some high grade resources um, and hopefully the, the geology doesn't let us down. We've got a, quite a unique geological theory here. We'd like to expand that across the district and, and looking at other areas because these type of deposits aren't well known about in Australia, ultramafic BMS type um, nickel deposits with that high grade cobalt and gold. Um, they're found in places like Morocco and Russia and um, places in Finland. So not, not all Australians will be quite familiar with the style of mineralization we're looking for. However, um, our, our geological model indicates that um, it's unlikely these deposits are depth constrained. In Morocco, for example, at Bouazir, which is a very similar deposit, they've been mining there for 90 years. They've mined over 100,000 tonnes of cobalt. Um, and being in Europe, part of the EU now, this move towards the, the battery passport. So if you're buying an electric vehicle, a certain percentage of those raw materials need to come from within the EU. So there's a real scramble on now for these 20 or so mega battery factories that have been constructed to um, to find the raw materials in Europe. And, and that's not always possible. And in Morocco, I mentioned, for example, Bouazir, they just did not take agreement with Renault to supply cobalt for their um, electric vehicle um, supply chain. So I think once we get to that resource stage, particularly if we have nickel and, and cobalt uh, and even copper in our resource, there'll be a lot of interest from European um, downstream users, potentially including car companies who um, would like to talk to us about uh, potentially supplying metals from within the EU to be used within the EU. And I think that that is a, um, a differentiating point, certainly. And that's one of the main reasons why investors are attracted to our story. Well, that would be for sure a certain reason. It's such a fast paced environment where we're seeing things move on so swiftly. That's been fascinating to hear your insights there, Jeff. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you very much for the opportunity and um, I hope investors can um, be educated. Go to our website, erementumresources.com.au and uh, various documents are available there for people to have a look at. Thank you for your time. Excellent, thank you so much. That's Jeff Muirs, Managing Director of Erementum Resources. And if you missed any part of that chat, you can catch the full interview on our YouTube channel, Kalkai Media. So make sure to subscribe. I'm Rachel, reminding you to stay apprised and invest wise with Kalkine.